Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with my list for the booktube spin. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this going around. Multiple booktubers are kind of joining in with this, but uh, Rick McDonnell over on his channel uh, decided to start this thing called the booktube spin. And I will link to his video down below so you can get a really in-depth look at what he's trying to do. But essentially what we have to do is get 20 bucks from our TBR number them, and then on January 31st, he's going to give us a number between one and 20, and we have to read the book that was that number by the end of March, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Jill from The Book Bully tagged me in this uh, and kind of wants us to go around booktube, and I completely agree. So if you have not made your list yet, go ahead and do it. So Rick wanted us to kind of put things into groups. Uh, so I have a couple of groups here. Uh, and so I have some rereads. I have some books that I have to get to anyway. I have some library books. Uh, and then I just have books that I generally want to read. So let's just start with the library books. I have three books out from the library right now. I actually have four out but I have already read one, so I'm feeling very on top of things in terms of my TBR. But the first of these is Jason and the Argonauts by Apollonius of Rhodes. This is a Greek classic of epic poetry that is, of course, about Jason and the Argonauts or Jason Medea, Jason and the Golden Fleece. I don't feel as though I've ever read this, and I might be wrong. I may have read this in part because it does seem kind of strange to me that I would never have come across this when I was in school, but it seems totally unfamiliar to me, so I'm really, really excited to read it. January has been a very heavy mythology month for me, uh, and so I am definitely really in the mood to pick this up quite soon. Another book that I have out from the library is Ten Caesars by Barry Strauss. Uh, and so this is a nonfiction book that is looking at the history of the Roman Empire through 10 specific emperors uh, from Augustus to Constantine. Uh, and so I am really interested in some of the middling emperors here. Uh, and I am just really excited to get into this because I've heard a lot of positive things about Barry Strauss over the years. I did open it up last night and read the first page of the introduction. And it spoke to me on a genuinely deep level because he was kind of telling you to picture yourself on top of the Palatine Hill, like amongst the ghosts of Rome's past. And I was like, yes, speak to me. Like, that's my language, uh, is to be in a place speaking to the ghosts of the past. And so I think Barry Strauss and I are going to get along. I am really looking forward to this one, and I will, of course, be picking this up soon anyway. Uh, so this is number two. Number three, and the last of the library books, is Ray Bearer by Jordan Fuego. This was a 2020 release. It is a YA fantasy that apparently has a very complex magic system. So many people have been loving this. I mean, people have just been raving about this since long before it came out. People who got early review copies absolutely adored this. I know almost next to nothing about the plot here, and I kind of want to keep it that way. Since so many people have really loved it, I think it's going to be an adventure just to kind of read this book and dive in blindly. Next, we have my three rereads. So the first of these is Ragnar Saga. So January was also a very heavy Viking month for me. I believe I've read three Viking books and I've attempted to read more. We'll see if I finish them by the end of the month. This has been calling to me, especially since Vikings just ended and I'm still a little bit depressed about that. Uh, so this has really been calling to me to see the original story and how things ended with the sons in the original saga. I just am going to reread this soon anyway, I feel. Uh, so I wanted to put this on the list. So this is number four, I believe. Number five is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Yesterday, all of these images were released from the Shadow and Bone TV show that's coming out on Netflix in April, and I felt myself honestly wanting to start rereading the series. And I do kind of want to do this anyway because the last book and the Nikolai duology is coming out in March. And so in many ways, I really just want to reread the original Grisha trilogy and then the Six of Crows duology to prepare for that because I kind of feel as though that will likely be the last entry she makes into the world of the Grisha for a very long time. That's my sense anyway, and I could be wrong, uh, but I definitely want to reread this anyway to get prepared for the show. I know the show is going to be very different. It has to be because it's mashing two of her series together, and I don't know really how that is going to work logistically, but I am so excited by almost everything I've seen from it. The majority of the cast 
really excites me. There are a couple of exceptions, but I am just really, really pumped about that show, and I would love to reread this trilogy before the show comes out. Number six is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. Uh, and I really put this here because in so many ways I want to reread the second book. And the second book in the trilogy is my favorite. And it's actually one of my favorite books of all time. I think the second book in the trilogy almost stands on its own. And it certainly stands above book one and book three in my opinion. Uh, but I did marathon the show this past weekend and the show has kind of disappointed me i think it's safe to say but it really did make me want to dive back into the world of the books this trilogy is one of my favorites of all time in general this series is my fantasy if i could live any kind of life i think i would live the life that diana lives the main character of a discovery of witches she definitely goes through some hardship let's not pretend she doesn't but she also experiences a lot of really wonderful things in this series this series is my bread and butter i know it doesn't work for everybody and a lot of people think it's really boring and it's really slow but it is absolutely my kind of thing our next category are books that I'm planning to get to anyway. Uh, so these are books that I am planning to read very shortly for a variety of reasons. Number seven, if we're at number seven, I think we are, is The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I have started reading this, but I did put it down because I wanted to join in with the read-along that's going to be hosted by a whole bunch of booktubers. Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, The Codex Cantina, uh, I believe A Musical Bookworm, and then Peg from The History Shelf are all hosting a read-along of this over the next couple of months, I believe. Uh, and so I am really excited about that. I'm so glad I decided to put this down because I really do feel like I need some guidance with it. And I think it will be really fun to read it in a group and to have some live shows where some people who have read this before uh, can answer some of my questions. But I do think I'm really going to enjoy this. Uh, so this is number seven. Number eight is Eusebius's The History of the Church. I have started reading this on audiobook, but that was a weirdly confusing experience because it was reading essentially a book like this that has notes at the end of each chapter, maybe. And so you couldn't differentiate between what was the actual text and what was the editor giving you a note telling you what he was making reference to in the audiobook and so i said i'm gonna have to get a physical copy of this so glad i did because i think this is going to be really fascinating eusebius lived in the later roman empire i believe he lived during the reign of constantine uh, and so he was writing a history of the very early church so he starts from around the life of jesus in the apostolic age uh, to around the time of constantine so i believe he covers a lot of the early martyrs and a lot of the early goings on of the church and i just think it's going to be really interesting i think this is a really interesting time period in general in terms of church history uh, and i really love the history of early christianity i think it's absolutely fascinating uh, so i think i'm really going to enjoy this Next, I have the autobiography of Benvenuto Cellini, and he is the sculptor of my favorite sculptor of all time, which is Perseus with the head of Medusa. And that is my favorite sculpture. I absolutely adore it. Uh, and Benvenuto Cellini has an anniversary coming up in February, so I would like to read this by then so that I can do a little video on his life. I think it will be 500 years since he died. He is apparently a very interesting person who wrote a very, uh, let's say, colorful autobiography of himself uh, where he places himself in very important positions <laughs> during the 1500s. And so I think it's always thought that you can't really take this too seriously because he really places a lot of importance on himself. Uh, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, and I am just really excited to get this glimpse into one of my favorite sculptor's lives. Uh, next, I have The Marble Fawn by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I came across this title in work a couple of weeks ago uh, because I came across an edition of Nathaniel Hawthorne's maybe collected works, and I saw The Marble Fawn was in it while I was inputting some metadata, and I thought to myself, what is this? I've never heard of this because it was called like an Italian romance or something. So I looked it up, and it is indeed an Italian romance. It's about several women going to Rome and they get involved with an artist named Donatello 
not the famous Donatello, uh, but somebody who they maybe shouldn't trust is my interpretation of things. Uh, and apparently this book was really popular in the 1800s and it was used almost as a guidebook for the city of Rome. And I said, okay, uh, I need that in my life. And so I broke my book buying ban to order a copy of this. I am really, really excited about this one. I'm hoping that I like it because I didn't like the Scarlet Letter, I know, and I know that most people didn't because people had like a poor reading experience with it in school. So I'm hoping that his writing works better for me in a place that is not the Scarlet Letter, but I just remember his endless sentences, I mean paragraphs that were a single sentence, and so I don't know that I will really get on with his writing style. But I'm hoping that this one is written a little bit differently to the Scarlet Letter. Last of the books that I'm just really excited about and that I think I will be getting to very soon is The Collector of Lives by Ingrid Rowland and Noah Charney. And this is a biography of Giorgio Vasari, uh, who is one of my favorites. He wrote one of my favorite classics of all time, which is The Lives of the Artists. He wrote several mini biographies of some of the most famous Renaissance artists at the time uh, when he was living. And so I'm really excited about this. This is a very acclaimed biography of him. And I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Now looking back, I'm thinking that this whole section, other than the Brothers Karamazov, could have been called the Italy section, so maybe that's what I should designate it. Uh, but I am really excited about all of these books, and I am hopefully going to be getting to them very soon. Next we have some books that are on my TBR that are in no particular order, but that I feel confident I will really enjoy. So we have A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is coming out in a couple of weeks, I believe, in early February. Uh, and this is a continuation of her A Court of Thorns and Roses series, which I am into, I am obsessed with. Uh, and so I am really looking forward to this. I think this is going to be an installment that I really like because it's following my favorite character uh, from the Court of Thorns and Roses series, which is Nesta. So I believe this will probably be in majority a fantasy romance, but I do believe there will probably be some good political machinations in it as well. Next, I have Blade of Four for you by Juliette Marillier, but this is actually the second book in the series, so I need to read The Dark Mirror, but I will hold this one in to take that one's place. But this is the only trilogy of Juliet Marillier's that I have left that I have not read a book from. Uh, and so I have been saving this for a very special occasion, but I desperately want to read a Juliet Marillier book. This is not a series of hers that I hear talked about very much, but it is one that has been recommended to me multiple times. Uh, and so I think I'm really going to like it. Next, I have Daughters of the Storm by Kim Wilkins, and this is an adult Viking fantasy, but I think it can probably be more appropriately called a Saxon fantasy based on some of the names I've seen from the description. I don't really know too much about what this is about, except that it follows a group of daughters who are the daughters of a king, and instead of one of them getting the throne when the king passes away, it goes to their male cousin, and so they are plotting to kind of overthrow him. And so I think it sounds really good. I think I will probably really like it, but it is a book that I haven't heard very much about. So that kind of concerns me. I heard a little bit of buzz when it came out and then I've heard nothing ever since. Uh, so hopefully I really enjoy it. I'm definitely in a Viking mood, so I'm hoping that I get on with it. I then have The Charter House of Parma by Stendhal. This is on my yearly TBR, uh, and I've actually not done very much in terms of my Napoleon project in the month of January, which is fine. I have the rest of the year to really embark on it, uh, but I do feel as though I'm already falling behind in month one. Uh, so this is a book that is on that list that I have kind of high hopes for. I feel like I should probably temper them a little bit because I feel like this book is really gonna blow me away. Uh, and so I'm hoping it does but I'm also hoping that my expectations for it aren't too high. Next, I have Star Daughter. This is a YA fantasy that came out last year that I meant to get to. I kept meaning to get to. Uh, and this is one that has often been compared to Lainey Taylor, who is one of my favorite YA writers. But this, I think, has to do with the celestial court, that she is the daughter of a star. And she has to go back into the realm of the stars to compete in a competition about who will eventually be one of the rulers in the kind of stellar realm. I'm not quite sure 
Eleanor, and I haven't heard too much about this in terms of plot. People really have been talking about the writing style, about whether or not they like her prose style. Uh, and so I feel pretty confident that I will really like how she's written this because a lot of people have called it very flowery. It sounds really imaginative and it really has, genuinely, one of the most stunning covers I've ever seen. I absolutely love this cover. Number 17, I think we've got to be at number 17, is The Witches of St. Petersburg. And so this is a historical fiction uh, that is taking place around the time of the Russian Revolution. And it's following two real historical figures who were thought to be witches who got in with Rasputin. I'm genuinely fascinated by Rasputin. And I don't know what that says about me that I love Rasputin. And I also really love Savonarola, who was another kind of mad monk. Uh, and so that's something that I'm really into. Don't know why, uh, but I think it will be interesting to see this time period from a different perspective. I often read books about the Russian Revolution, and it's typically from the perspective of somebody in the Tsar's family. Uh, and so I think this will be really fun to read from another noble's perspective. Uh, at number 18, I have The Confessions of Franny Langton, and a lot of people have recommended this book to me, and I have heard it is so so, so good. This is historical fiction set in Victorian London where somebody is wrongly accused of murder, I believe. I believe she is a maid and the mistress of the household was murdered and they have indicted her for it, but I don't know that she did it. I've heard this is a really wonderful exploration of race in Victorian society as well. And so I'm really interested in it from a lot of different aspects and I have genuinely not heard a poor review of it. So I am really looking forward to this one. At number 19, we have Torquato Tasso's The Liberation of Jerusalem. This is an Italian epic poem from the 1500s and I am just really looking forward to it because it is written in rhyming verse. I think I'm really going to enjoy it. I felt like I needed to put some poetry on this list, but I felt like that would be taking the easy way out because I've been reading a lot of poetry, so I didn't feel like that would be a challenge to get to, uh, but this is a really long epic poem, so I am really excited about it, but I'm also apprehensive of its size, uh, so hopefully I really enjoy this. Last but not least, number 20 is Italo Calvino's Why Read the Classics. This is a collection of essays where he discusses different classics. I think this will be really interesting and hopefully it will encourage me to get to some of the classics that are on my TBR that I've always been a little intimidated by. Uh, so this is number 20. So that's everything that I have for my list for the booktube spin. If you wanna join in, please do leave your list in the comments. I would love to hear your opinions about any of these down below if you've read them. And I would love to know what's on your list for the booktube spin. But that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading, goodbye.